Hello fellow rail fans, welcome back to another video. This video is going to be about some things I think can make TSW better and things that can be added to the game. There's going to be three sections, routes, features, and bugs. When we get to the last part, you'll definitely know. I'll leave multiple links down in the description to the Wikipedia pages for all the routes. Let's get started. I'm suggesting all of the New York City subway lines, but for real, we're going to say the Staten Island Railway, the 1 train, and the 7 train, and everything else, if possible. Let's start with the SIR. The Staten Island Railway is sort of a part of the NYC subway, but it's not classified as a line in the internal MTA. It has no connections to the mainline subway. It uses NYC subway R44s built in 1974. The line goes from St. George Ferry Terminal in the northern part of the island to Tottenville at the southern end. This line has a cool service pattern with an hourly express train skipping almost every station. This route has some nice scenery and is filled with trains, so the senior dev of Trainsome World, Matt, should like this route very much. Now for the one line. The one train is a part of the New York City subway. It runs between 242nd Street, Van Cortlandt Park, in the Bronx, to South Ferry in Manhattan. It operates at all times and runs relatively frequently. It uses R62s and R62As. However, there's only about one to two R62s in service on the one line. And with the current pandemic going on in the world, only the R62As are in operation on the line. It runs on a mix of open viaducts, elevated, and underground tracks, with a very, very nice view of Harlem at the 125th Street Station. I grew up on this line in the six lines, and I would really like to see my former line in the game. For the final NYC subway suggestion, we have the 7 train. It runs between Flushing Main Street in Queens to 34th Street Hudson Yards in Manhattan. This line has R188s and converted R142As, which are also technically R188s now. This rolling stock has automated announcements, which are crucial to this line. This line also uses CBTC, which helps trains run closer together. Wait times are usually between 2 to 5 minutes. During rush hours, and only during rush hours, the automatic train operation feature is turned on and the computer operates the train itself. This line runs on elevated and underground tracks, with most of the line being elevated. Now, for transport for London, I suggest the Victoria Line, Circle Line, and Metropolitan Lines. The Victoria Line is underground for the entirety of its route, besides when going to its yard, while the Circle and Metropolitan Lines both are subsurface routes and have a mix of underground and overground tracks. The Victoria Line uses the 2009 stock, while the Circle and Metropolitan Lines use S stock. All three of these lines have automated announcements. Another TFL route I suggest is the Watford DC Line. It is a London Overground route that uses Class 710s and runs between Watford Junction and London Euston. This line runs along the Baker Loo for about half of its route between Harrow and Weldstone and Queen's Park and has some nice scenery. It also runs along the East Coast Main Line. For the final system, I'm going to go with the path. It has five short lines and uses PA5 rolling stock. It runs between Newark, Hoboken, World Trade Center, and 33rd Street. It is mostly underground, but while it's above ground, it has a very unique array of tracks, with New Jersey Transit running in the center tracks with Amtrak. These trains also have automated announcements. Now that we're out of the routes portion, let's move into features. We have two suggestions in this category with many subcategories in them. With the first thing, I'm going to say a conductor or guard mode. Some routes in TSW use guards or conductors in real life, such as LIRR. The operator doesn't control the doors, the conductors do. There'll be either one or two of them around the middle of the train and they'll check tickets and control the doors. For New York subway and path suggestions above, a conductor mode will also need to be implemented. Conductors will be in the middle of the train in the sixth car 
or seventh car for the seven train and will point at a black and white striped board at every station to show that they are paying attention and the train is stopped in the correct place. They will then open the doors and make announcements depending on if that rolling stock doesn't have automated announcements. The next feature is going to be more things to do slash dynamic things happening. Being a train operator isn't always a walk in the park. It can be stressful sometimes. TSW doesn't capture this feeling. That is why I think it starts to get boring after a little while because it isn't really simulating the real life of a train operator. They should have disruptive passengers, faulty signals, work on the tracks, passengers holding doors, and more to add realism to the game. Some of these events that occur will either cause your train to be late, have to travel at a reduced speed, or go out of service. This can be a feature that could be turned off in the main menu. The next thing is the bugs. We can all agree that there are too many bugs in Train Some World, and it ruins the experience and immersion. It's not cool to not be able to hear track noise or have something clip through the side of the train. And then, Dovetail goes on the streams and lies at our faces, claiming, no, there isn't a problem with it, when they have real operators and people who've experienced it themselves telling them that there is a problem with it. I've been on the subway countless times in my life, and I know that it definitely isn't silent. And I'm talking about the Baker Lou line here, the newest route. Dovetail needs to start fixing these bugs and not just forgetting about them and moving on to another half-baked route. Right now, it seems like River Games is doing the right thing with the Isle of Wight. I think it's taking so long because they're actually taking the time to go back and fix as many bugs as possible and not rush the DLC out. Now, the DLC isn't out yet so I can't say for sure, but I have a feeling that the difference in quality between the one route that Rivet is going to make and all the Dovetail Games routes is definitely going to be noticeable. Hopefully, Rivet can show that they can make a high quality route for TSW and they can start making more and more high quality routes. Another thing is, Dovetail needs more people, more developers. They only have 100 people in total, and that just isn't enough people to have to create an expansive train simulator that is also on consoles, with more workers from around the globe, or in the most used countries like the US and Germany, the game can definitely be better. I'm done here. If you like the video, like the video. If you ain't subscribed yet, I'm hunting you down. Peace.